In this example, we're going to walk through how to build a reduction table from experimental data, but we're going to look at how to do so when the data is given to, a, given to us as a set of reactions rather than a table. So this is a typical question that you'll see. Several metals are used in the manufacture of permanent magnets. A student wanted to compare the relative strengths of some of these metals and their corresponding ions as oxidizing and reducing agents. He immersed a strip of each metal in an aqueous solution of a metallic ion and recorded the following observations. Now we don't have a table and if we tried to construct one we would probably see that we don't have enough data. So I'm going to quickly go through and just highlight all of the reducing agents in red. So as a reminder the reducing agents are typically the less positively charged version of a species. So in the first reaction we have neodymium and neodymium 2 plus. So neodymium is our reducing agent in that first reaction. In our second reaction, neodymium solid, a metal atom, is also our reducing agent. And in our third reaction, yttrium solid is a metal atom, so that is our reducing agent. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing with our oxidizing agents. So metal cations are typically oxidizing agents. So cobalt 2 plus, yttrium 3 plus, and 2 plus are our oxidizing agents. Now, if we remember from uh, our review of redox tables, we know that for a spontaneous reaction, the oxidizing agent is above the reducing agent in that table. Okay, so our first reaction where we see there's products listed, that means that that reaction is spontaneous. That reaction went forward. The second reaction where it says no evidence of reaction, that is a non-spontaneous reaction. Our third reaction, also a non-spontaneous reaction. So we're going to start with our first reaction. So we have cobalt 2 plus and neodymium solid. Cobalt 2 plus is our oxidizing agent. It is above neodymium in our table. So I'm going to write cobalt 2 plus on my left hand side and then I'm just going to write somewhere below that neodymium solid. So neodymium. All right, so I've done my first reaction. And if you want to kind of keep track, we know that the cobalt is above the neodymium and that's from reaction one. Reaction two, we see that neodymium is above yttrium because it's non-spontaneous. The OA is below the RA. So I'm just going to draw a little dashed line here. And I know that yttrium three plus is somewhere beneath neodymium. And so reaction two tells me that. And then lastly, we see that samarium 2 plus, because it's not spontaneous with yttrium, will be below yttrium solid. Now yttrium 3 plus and yttrium solid will be on the same line. They're part of the same half reaction. So samarium 2 plus is going to be below yttrium solid. So samarium will be somewhere here. And I've now ranked all of my species. So I'm going to fill in the rest of this table. I'm going to use just a slightly different color so we don't get confused. So cobalt 2 plus will gain two electrons to form cobalt solid. Neodymium's counterpart will be neodymium 2 plus, which will gain two electrons. Yttrium will gain three electrons to form yttrium solid. And samarium will gain two electrons to form samarium solid. So in this table, our strongest oxidizing agent is in the top left corner, that is cobalt 2 plus, and our strongest reducing agent is in the bottom right corner, that is samarium solid.